terms of mental health though, we all do struggle with it. And, and if we ignore it, if none of us talk about it, then th there's definitely a, a large population of people who are gonna feel not seen. Whether it's an artist or a professional athlete, you know, you are a person and you have the same issues and worries and fears as every other person. Well, I'm really glad that we're talking about it. It's something that I don't often get the chance to speak about or I don't always have the courage to speak about as well because um, I'm just so focused these days on trying to pump out my best work and connect with my community. And sometimes when I share more vulnerable sides of things outside of my inner circle, it's scary. You know, I don't know how people are going to react. And I think in art, something it's taken me a long time to realize is that it's not about the numbers side of things. Um, the way I'm going to be most successful is if I can be the best version of myself, because in all of us, we all have something unique. We all have a gift. And there's a certain, just like the certain way that you can throw a baseball that not everybody can do. Uh, I have a certain way I can draw a line. You also have a certain way you can draw a line, believe it or not. And no one else can do it exactly like you can. So not trying to draw the most perfect straight line, but trying to draw the one that looks the most like what you have inside and feels the, feels the best like what you have inside is what I've been going for. Yeah, I love that. That's something that I really focus on is like the process, like always having my same process because the results aren't always going to be there. You know, it's not always going to be perfect. You're not always going to uh, end the day at work, whatever it is, thinking that that it went really well. Most of the time, actually, believe it or not, in my profession, you end the day thinking you did terribly. Uh, and so it's that um, process and continuing to say, all right, did I check off all the boxes today? Of Did I, you know, did I take care of myself mentally? Did I meditate? Did I do my work? Uh, the right way did I my practice like was all of that stuff right in the game I can't control the results but everything else before that um, I can't control going about the right way and that's something that like puts me at peace and lets me um, kind of continue on doing the same things uh, every day and knowing that um, you know eventually that consistency will lead to success I, you know what's funny is when I started out in my career I, I had this idea of like this is what a successful artist or designer looks like I have to be this and I tried so hard to impress people and be that, that version. And then I realized I wasn't really being myself. So what is what does it look like to show up and not have any time or like force yourself to not second guess what you're creating? So sometimes I'll just put the pen down on paper and I will start moving it around and I'll start creating some images of just like continuous line drawings, like start dragging the pen and then change directions and change direction again. And eventually you end up with an image. One of the reasons I like to work in, in lines, um, one is because I can, I can create a lot of artwork faster versus doing filling the entire page with color. Um, so I can explore different ideas in like sketch form. Even if I'm not using pencil, I can use paint straight with a paint marker. Um, and then also the line, you can see evidence of the human hand. You can see evidence of time passing. And I think that's just the most precious thing we have is time. And uh, if you can see that when you look at an artwork, I think it adds value to it. And it just makes me remember all those little decisions, all those changes in direction. I don't know if I should show you now or if I should wait till later. <laughs> it's up to you. This is the one that ended up being the final like concept for the print. And it, it ended up changing a lot, but this was the one where I felt like it represented the concept of mental health the best. Uh, I'm curious what you see here and why you think I chose this one to move forward with. Oh, that's a great question. I, first of all, I think what you talked about with the, the passage of time and the lines and um, just being able to see that over the course of the page, like I think that's really powerful because one of the things that I think, especially in this day and age with the, how fast things move and how much, um, over how overwhelmed people can become. And like, I'm very guilty of it thinking like having um, plenty of things to get done and being really overwhelmed uh, with the amount of time that you have to get them done in. Uh, I think that that's, it, it, it's a powerful testament to 
um, how much time can influence our mental state and, and how overwhelmed we can be and what slowing down and taking a minute and breathing, like how important that is to not get overwhelmed with all of those responsibilities. But tell me a little bit more about the piece of what it means to you. Basically this piece, it felt like there is a lot of emotion happening here, but it leaves a lot of to interpretation from the viewer. So I don't want to over explain it really. Um, there's definitely some, some ups and some downs you can see here, some like twists and turns and things that are fixed and things that are broken. And, yeah. and um, I wanted to capture all of it because we're human first before we are performers or artists or athletes or brands. Uh, that's something I try to carry with me everywhere is I'm a human first. I'll talk to anybody really. And at least while, while I can afford to right now, I'm, I'm open, I'm an open book. And I, I really care about building community and just connections with people. My story is I had a near death experience a few years back and it really put things into perspective for me where I realized tomorrow might not exist. So what you were just talking about with now, like the time that we have being the most important thing and slowing down and breathing, it all ties back into the meditation, but it's really it, that that's, I realized that one day we will be gone and these moments, these connections, these communities, they matter, these stories matter and they matter that there's meaning in that as much as you want to believe. And it, it, it enriches my life to believe that these things are important, that each art piece that I create is important whether it's physical or digital, or if it's a print or it's an original, like there's a connection being made there. I think the biggest thing for me that I've learned through exploration of mental health and, and many different forms is how important it is to live in the present and how, how precious that is. Because there's, it doesn't matter if it's sports, work, life, like the past and the future, there's a lot of fear in both of those. There's, it, it's really difficult um, because you always want you're always going back and forth between thinking about the past or worrying about the, the future. And the most powerful thing you can do is to live in the present. My experience and where I really got into mental health is my dad, I was diagnosed with brain cancer when I was 20 um, and, and passed away uh, really early on. And I got to see him go through that struggle and that, um, you know, at a difficult point in my life where I was having a lot of success personally, because I was getting drafted to the Cubs and, um, kind of fulfilling a lot of things that I've worked my whole life for while he was dealing with, uh, you know, terminal cancer. And so um, it, it took for me to learn about my own mental health um, and, and relying on meditation and focusing on uh, breathing and being in the present and not worrying about the future or, or dwelling on the past to be able to go out and perform every day and, and to continue to live my life and get through some of those really difficult times for me personally. Um, and that's something that I've carried with me to this day is just trying to be as present as possible because the, the moments are so important. And I think what you're talking about with connecting to the community um, and being able to be a human first, because it's one of the things that uh, sometimes gets lost is that, whether it's an artist or a professional athlete, you know, you are a person and you have the same issues and worries and fears as every other person. And it's that connection and relating um, and being able to help and be a voice and, and a positive impact on the community that's so important. Thank you for, for sharing your story, man. It's, it's an honor to get to speak with you about this stuff and really like the way that you articulate it is so beautiful. I can't even like begin to speak to about how artists struggle. I, I have, I know very little compared to the struggle of the starving artist. the typical stereotype of the starving artist. I grew up very privileged compared to most other people in my field. And I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm trying to relate to people, but also I know that I don't have all the experience in the world. Um, I, I'm, I'm very lucky in so many ways. And I try to just be grateful. In terms of mental health though, we all do struggle with it. And, and if we ignore it, if none of us talk about it, then th there's definitely a, a large population of people who are gonna feel not seen. And so I don't necessarily know how to say it in words, but I do think that 
sometimes when I create art, it resonates with people on a deep level. It helps them feel seen because I do have the same feelings. Like we all have a heart that beats. It's been a, a process of channeling that through my art and seeing what resonates with others and using that as a medium to connect. For me is important, not for professional athletes or for uh, people with a huge platform. I think it's more important for kids and for a, you know adults that don't feel like they can express themselves because they'll feel weak or, or or less than and for kids who are going through something and being quiet because um, they don't think that it will be acceptable I think breaking that stigma and letting people who are struggling um, have a platform or feel like it's okay to speak out um, and to be vulnerable and be open I think that that is the most important thing because when you can talk about it, when you have somebody to relate to, when um, when it's okay to share your story, um, is when things get better. It's when you start to learn about how to focus on the present and how to be uh, the best version of yourself um, that you can then make make change and make progress. And it's something that for me, uh, I share my story so that more people feel comfortable doing the same. I think it's important to give back in general. I, I've been really lucky as an artist to have more work than I can handle and build a small team around me that helps me do these projects. So wherever I can, I'm always down to support worthy causes. And this cause is, is one that's close to my heart. So it made perfect sense. What I'm hoping that comes out of the collaboration is just more stories, more campaigns, more uh, connections with young people around this topic. And I think with Bring Change to Mind, that's exactly what they do. And I trust them a lot more than I trust myself to, to do that. So putting the money in the hands of this nonprofit will just hopefully push forward to end this stigma around mental health and make people feel seen on a day-to-day -day basis a little bit more than, than if this collaboration didn't exist. Yeah, Bring Change to Mind, I've been working with them for a few years now and um, just like you said, I trust them a lot more than I trust myself. I, I'm, I'm happy to talk and, and to be a voice and, and to share my story, uh, but they're the ones on the ground. They're the ones impacting having after school programs, um, making sure that they're in the community helping kids. Uh, and I think that that's a huge part of it is, is, is giving kids an outlet and a space, um, after school to be able to talk to be able to share their stories and their experiences and, and that's a huge part of breaking the stigma and and helping us advance in the next generation to where people feel more comfortable to do so and um i'm just super happy to support it to talk about it and and happy that you've been so gracious with your time and your work um and and the support of brain change to mind it's really awesome i was chatting with a friend recently and i'm showing him this technique that i do with the continuous line and I was like, just try it, just try it. Put the pen on the paper, drag it around a little bit, see where it goes. And then when you feel like you wanna switch directions, switch directions. And he starts going across the page and then stops and he starts judging what he just created. And I said, I didn't ask you to, to look at what you created and judge it. I asked you to focus on the present moment and focus on the tip of the pen, not the line you just created you can't change the past you really can't change mm -hmm. what you just did or what you did years ago but whatever you're doing right now whatever you're working towards it's meaningful it's important it's i don't know if i believe in everything happens for a reason but i think the present moment is important regardless of where you are and you also have a lot more power than you think to to change you have a lot more potential than you think and so just because you might be judging your past uh, or your, your track record with, with what you're creating or what you're putting out, how you're performing, doesn't mean that that's where your potential stops. Yeah, that's really powerful. That is something that in baseball, in my work, whether it's your batting practice or your cage routine, and you hit a bad ball, you have to learn from it in like two seconds and then move on because if you keep dwelling on it and keep judging it and judge your past work, when you look up at the scoreboard and you're over three and you know, you're judging those past three at bats and, and mentally grinding on them and, and thinking, Oh God, it was three hours ago. That first at bat, when he struck me out, it's, it's over and being able to learn from it quickly and then move on 
and be in the present moment and focus on where your feet are being present in the outfield and making the next play or then getting the batter's box and being present and that like that's something that I've spent my entire life trying to get better at yeah I hope when this when this collaboration comes out and this video gets seen by the the artist of the next generation they'll realize that what they're creating doesn't have to look a certain way it can just flow out of them and be art as it is it doesn't have to get recreated over and over again and and sort of put into a box that society can understand it's okay to be different it's okay to just let things flow out of you and see what happens you never like you might end up being a lot more talented than you think um in terms of your growth because when we compare ourselves to ourself in the past that i think is the only form of healthy comparison versus comparing yourself to others, which can be just like kill all of your joy and, and make you make you take things for granted as well. Because we all have some some sort of growth happening, even if one thing in our life is going down, like we have something else that's coming up. And, um, you know, my name F dot is, is a, it, it kind of ties into this. I think that a dot it, in like a period is like the beginning of something, I'm sorry, the end of something and the beginning of something new. And every day we have that chance to create something and not judge ourselves too much. Yeah, that ju judgment is, it's a great word. I, I don't know. I, I view judgment as kind of a, a pretty negative thing and that I'm always trying to be super positive and look at the bright sides of things and, and to really do that positive reinforcement with myself and that positive self-talk um, and stay away from judgment and stay away from you know, worrying about how I'm being judged or viewed or, um, and that super positive uh, reinforcement. I think that that it's so, so powerful. Do you think that the people around you, like what was, was there a point in your life where the, you changed your circle around you to, to reinforce that? Because sometimes we're born into a situation where we don't have that positive reinforcement at our fingertips. And how do you change that? Yeah, I think um, it was something that I had to work really hard on because especially when I was younger, uh, there was a lot of negative self-talk. It was just something that I think I had enough talent early in my life to overcome the negative self-talk. Uh, and, and there's, you know, a, this stigma of working really hard, being hard on yourself, like pushing yourself to be great. Um, I did a lot of that. And, and then I finally reached a level where my talent wasn't enough to help me progress, that everybody was just as talented as me. And I had to get really good at talking to myself in a positive way. And I had to, it's something that I've worked on for a long time because um, I had people telling me to, that I needed to work on it at a young age. I had some really good mentors, um, but it took time, it took a lot of time. I'm still working on it. You know, there's still times when uh, fall into a pattern of negative self-talk. And, and um, I think the most powerful thing that somebody can say to you or, or maybe the most impactful is, would you ever let somebody talk to you the way that you talk to yourself? You know, if, if, the way that I talk to myself sometimes, I would punch that guy in the face. Like that's, <laughs> some of the things you say to yourself can be pretty cruel. And so how can you be your biggest cheerleader? How can you recognize when you're going into a pattern of of negative self-talk and, and kind of work your way out of it. And that's probably been the biggest transition in my life, personal and professional. Um, so here I wanted to share, I was able to get the final design onto my iPad here. This is the, the finished print for Mental Health Awareness Month. It's amazing. I think that this visual to me captures the highs and lows of this struggle. Um, on the bottom, you can see the, the dugout with the team coming together to support each other. And I'm grateful for opportunities like this where, where people can just support each other and, and connect. Like hearing you speak is inspiring me to do better and to be more transparent with my community about the things I struggle with, whether they're, they're big or small. And um, also to shine a light on people who do struggle with a chemical imbalance in their brain and can't do much to change that. Yeah, I think that you know your work is something that is it's speaking to the feelings that people have and it's letting people um, have a voice to understand. And I, and I think that art has, is such a powerful 
medium to be able to express those emotions and to give people an opportunity to think through um, all of those things and all of the points in, in your work that has the ups and the downs and, and to just show the human element. Eric, I just wanted to say thank you. I mean, that's it's been awesome to talk and, and to, to see your work and, and to get your perspective and, and how, how much this means to you. I think it's been a huge learning experience for me and um, I look forward to when we can actually meet in person and, and I can see the work in the, in the club store and maybe I get to see more of your stuff. It's been really cool. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me the platform to collaborate and to also just chat with you. I get emotional thinking about, you know, all the kids who who are watching you play and getting inspired to be, you know, something great in the future. So thank you for all the impact you're creating and uh, just can't wait to see how this comes out. Super excited about it. Thanks so much.